guys, this is Calvin from Instalod. In this video, we're going to take a look at the camera-based occlusion culling mode. Please make sure to watch part one of this video series so that you're up to date with all of the occlusion cull settings and know what they all do. In this first example, I want to create a camera and remove all of the polygons on this plane that are not visible to it. First of all, we can specify the camera parameters, including focal length and the camera aspect ratio. This works with standard cameras from Maya, Unreal Engine and Unity as well. Next, I will create a camera which can also be created using the shortcut Alt and C. Then we can set up the occlusion call settings with by polygon, remove geometry, and then we can reduce the resolution to 32. Now, here we can see why a high resolution is sometimes necessary. We have received a bunch of holes. Increasing the resolution to 64 does a better job, but still gives us holes. A resolution of 128 is almost perfect, but we can still notice some issues around the edges of the camera. This is where an adjacency depth can be really useful to add a safety buffer. With a depth of three polygons, we can actually go ahead and reduce the resolution back to 64. Beware that the denser a mesh is, the higher of a resolution or adjacency depth might be necessary to create a clean result. An unlimited amount of cameras can technically be used by Instalod. However, the more cameras you use for occlusion culling, the more processing power is required. Let's start off with two cameras, one at the top and one at the bottom. We can see that looking through both cameras, we can't actually see a difference. However, when we start moving away, the difference is very clear. Let's apply this to a more complex scene. So here we have a motor made up of 800 objects and 700,000 polygons. I only want to maintain what is visible to the cameras in my scene. So therefore, we're just going to go ahead, set up some cameras, set up the occlusion call settings, and then let this run. So again, here we can see that through the cameras that we've set up, we can't see any differences. However, when we move away, everything outside the camera's viewport has been removed. Another nice way of using the camera-based mode is to create an inverse 360 view camera rig. I will be using this car as an example. Let's pretend that we want to create a car configurator or a racing game where the client should be able to look around the interior of the vehicle. For that to work, I simply have to create a few cameras looking into all different directions. To cover a larger viewing angle, I will increase the field of view and get started with spawning cameras using the keyboard shortcut Alt and C. Let's let that process and see what we end up with. With this rig set up, everything within the vehicle is visible from this exact point, no matter in which direction we look. However, if we move away, we can see what's actually happened here. Now, if you wanted to, you could take that camera rig and group it and duplicate it and move it around the scene to cover multiple viewing areas. I hope that this was able to give you a good overview of what is possible with the occlusion culling feature. In the next video, I will show you some more workflows of where occlusion culling can be applied to optimize scenes even further.